finished the journey around Mallorca's coast, Mallorca's west coast. I'm here for the second time. I was here actually one and a half years ago in March to hike the famous GR221 trail, which everybody's hiking and everybody should hike because it's very, very beautiful trail. But I just wanted to do something different this time because the GR221 is, is very well known and very crowded at some places. So there are so many people there and I like more to be alone and also I more like these coasts and beaches and the original GR221 is going through mountains so that was a very different experience and I wanted my favorite coastal hike so I made my new own hike this is not any official trail I just looked at the touristic maps and tried to find teeny tiny paths around the coast around the whole west coast so I was basically walking from Sant Elm on the south of Mallorca to Port de Poyenza but by very very narrow and local paths where most people are just not walking and it was well worth it i loved this trail a lot they were so beautiful and so magnificent views that from my perspective it was way better than gr221 which was more mountain hike and you you could just go to place like this at the end or at the beginning in St. Elm. So yeah, it was my own trail and I'm very glad that I hiked it because originally I wanted to hike uh, the East Coast, which I will do eventually. But uh, at, the, at the last moment I changed my plans and, and went to by the West Coast, which is completely different than the East Coast. It's actually very easy to get to Mallorca because it's its favorite destination, touristic destination, and many people are coming here, which is on one side good because the flights are very frequent and uh, reasonably priced. It's not priced, it's not as cheap as it was last year when I came basically for 15 euros. Now it's like 100. But still, it's easy to get there and relati relatively reasonably priced. And if you avoid the touristic places and areas, it can be the same remote and as any other remote hike, you know, like Corfu, for example which I hiked a few months ago and it was completely lonely and completely remote hike a part of typical, you know, like here GR221 or, or Tour de Mont Blanc or any other one. And because it's a very touristic island, it's very, very easy here to transport between any places you want. You can visit anything here very easily because the, the public transport, especially buses, they are very, very frequent. They are going basically every, every 10, 15 minutes from any place you look around, there, should, there is some bus stop, you know, like one kilometer, the farthest. And I really like how it is made here that you don't need to buy any tickets, you don't need to book anything, you don't have to even talk to the driver, you know, you can, <laughs> you can basically decide in the bus where you want to go because it works in a way that by the bus, by the driver, there's a, there's a tablet and you just put your phone or your card there. And when you are leaving the bus, 
you tap out at the similar you know tablet it's by all those doors so the system recognizes you that where you entered and where you left and you do this all day where you want from bus to bus and they just charge you once per day at the end of the day the sum of the distance you traveled so I really like this one and I used it a lot when I wanted to go to the town, you know, to get some food and go back to trail or here on Fermentor. So it's, or you want, you know, for example, to go to Lidl to make bigger shopping, it's super easy just to hop on a bus and, and get back when you make shoppings. But also <laughs> what's, what's very tricky is that you can't forget to tap out with your phone or your card when you are leaving the bus because otherwise they will charge you for the whole road of the bus <laughs> and they, that actually happened to me yesterday when I was basically going from Port de Poyenza to Poyenza which is like five minutes only but I was talking with one guy and when I was leaving I forgot to tap out and obviously they charged me <laughs> the road through the whole island at the end to Palma, which was very expensive. So y you have to think about it when you are when you are leaving the bus, really to tap out, because nobody will remind you. They will just just charge you. When you are deciding about the time where when to come to Mallorca, I, last year I was here on March in March, and in the higher places it was it was even snowing and hailing and and foggy but also very nice weather so it was fine but this time I'm here in September and oh my gosh it's so hot here most of the days I had 30 31 degrees and because the trail or those paths which I took were sometimes very, very steep. It was way worse because of the sun. So I'm not sure if I would recommend to come here till the end of September or after April because it's just so hot. Of course, the weather is nice. It's it's sunny and and beautiful here, but it's very, very hot. And in the night when it's over 20 degrees, 22, 23 degrees, it's super uncomfortable, you are melting. You can't be in the sleeping bag. On the other hand, you want to be in the sleeping bag because in lower areas, they are mosquitoes. And one night, there were so many mosquitoes that they, they didn't care about the repellent. They were just biting and biting the whole night and I didn't sleep even one hour. I just couldn't sleep the whole night. I was just praying for the morning and waiting for the morning <laughs> so they will leave. So, yeah, it has advantages and disadvantages. On the other hand, one local guy told me that one week before I came, there was a few days of rain and they call the week after the longer rain, they call it the happy week which means that the sky is nice and blue and clear, you know, the air is clear and, and everything is nice. So they call it happy week. So I had a happy week here, but on the other hand, it was way too hot. And because you, you don't see on the map, I was going blindly. I didn't know how it will look like. And it was much more difficult than I expected because on the map you just see, you know, the path, you just see dashed line. So you know that there is a path. So I was going there because it was marked in the map, but I didn't know or I didn't imagine how big uh, elevation there will be. There was every day there was 1,200 meters of elevation. <laughs> and that's, that's a lot, that's a lot. So sometimes you are just going up with the heavy backpack for hours to steep uphill and then downhill that was that was more difficult than i expected from this perspective on the other hand it was much more beautiful than i expected because it was just 
those views were just simply amazing, much better. There are no pictures from these paths, you know, so you don't know, I didn't know where I'm going. And also I was twice, twice I got surprised that, for example, there was a big gate, big fence, two and a half meters, and there was, I wasn't on, uh, on a private place, I was in a public spot, but it was just closed and I had to go over two and a half meter big fence, which wasn't <laughs> very pleasant experience. I damaged my backpack and lost something there, but uh, yeah, and uh, so <laughs> it was quite difficult. I would say it was more difficult than uh, GR221, but it, w it was uh, much more rewarding and yeah, more, ex more challenging, but more rewarding and more beautiful from my point of view. And because it's going on those local paths, you know, outside of the trails, you don't meet many people, which was very nice. And for that reason, you can enjoy it much more, you know, because there is nobody, nowhere. Also, there is, in some areas, there is no signal because of that. So you shouldn't get lost or you shouldn't get hurt because <laughs> nobody will find you there or they would find you after several days but they were like for example between Deya and Port de Soler so here there is the path which I took by the coast was absolutely gorgeous I highly recommend anyone who is coming to Mallorca even not to hike it to hike everything what I did but to pick some places, I definitely recommend the part between Deya and Port de Soyer because that one was absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, because of that, it's not uh, marked anywhere as a trail. You definitely need a map in your phone and offline maps because other than that, you will, without that, you will definitely get lost. I went through wrong places a few times that I missed the turn, but nothing happened, nothing horrible happened. It just was, it was just some deter, but really I needed the map all the time, several times per day, basically every 10 minutes I was checking on the map if I'm still somewhere on the path, on the place where I want to be and that I'm not somewhere where I don't want to be. So I recommend mappy.cz, which is awesome touristic app. They have very detailed touristic maps of every country and here there was literally every single local path here marked in the map so it was very useful. I don't understand why Google don't, doesn't have anything like that. No touristic maps on Google you can't see anything, they are just roads so you can't go by that but by touristic apps it's definitely possible here and you can choose your own paths here because they are many and many are forgotten which is even better and with that also uh, it's not a problem here to find a camping spot and camping I mean like I didn't have a tent I just took a bivouac bag and I was using it instead of uh, sleeping bag because it was just too hot for a sleeping bag but I was still melting in a bivouac bag but uh, it, it's very easy to find a sleeping spot here there are places everywhere and also on that on that trail which I took there were two refugios one was above Port de Soyer uh, by the lighthouse which was very nice and another refugio is in Poyenza, where I think they are ruled by the government, so um, it's all connected. They will even recommend you the other one. They share the database of uh, the users, so when you sleep at one, you come to other one and they just have all your data. So, and, and because of that, it's affordable. It's like 15 euros. Per night, and you get a bed, you know, and uh, and the showers, 
and you can recharge your stuff. So that was very nice uh, to have on the place. I used it twice, but still they are very nice places to sleep. I highly recommend especially Puig de Maria, which is a very small monastery above Poyensa at the end of the hike, at the, at the end of the trail. You have to climb it a bit, it's like 300 meters of ascending, but it's a very beautiful place there and there is absolutely gorgeous camping spot where not camping, I think you can't set up a tent there, it's not big enough, but it's enough for a sleeping bag. And from that place, when it gets dark, you see the whole Poyensa below you with all those teeny tiny lights and it's very, very romantic, but that's not everything. Much better is the morning on this spot. Just remember Puig de, Puig de Maria the little monastery. It's the best sunset I have ever experienced. I was here in Mallorca and I discovered it randomly. And, and I shared it on the internet and people started to come here. And people came there for a sunset check people because of my blog post. But uh, I wanted to say that I came here for the second time basically just because I knew how beautiful sun, sunrise is there because the sun is going up in a way that it's you know behind the horizon and and the, the poyensa below and it's going right up to your sleeping bag <laughs> but that was actually the night where I, when I couldn't sleep because of so many mosquitoes there were thousands of mosquitoes I have you know bites everywhere that was a horrible experience but the uh, place is really really nice and i think that this year somebody told me that this year the the mosquito season is one month le longer than usually that usually they are not active so long but now in october they still are even when they in other years they are not so during the, the spring and summer and late summer they are mosquitoes so maybe yeah, if you are if you want to try that uh, that camping spot that beautiful camp camping spot by the monastery maybe i don't know take a tent and set up it somewhere i don't know how or come later in the year or earlier in the year that march should be fine but it's very, very nice place, which I can recommend. Also, I can recommend uh, Fermentor, which is where I am now. It's the north of, of uh, the island, the northern part of the island. It's very, very touristic, but if you come in the morning, there is nobody here. Tourists are waking up late, so if you can come at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., there is nobody here. And it's a very beautiful place. And I wanted actually, I wanted to explore the whole area of Formentor. But because the last night I just couldn't sleep at all. I didn't sleep. I just didn't sleep at all. I had to, or I decided to go to sleep to the Refugio in Poyensa to have one proper night of sleep. So I didn't go the whole way. And at the end of Formentor, there is a lighthouse also with absolutely gorgeous view and you can see even Menorca from there my lovely Menorca and I also want to come back but this is yeah this is a very nice area to explore there is a beach Playa de Formentor very very nice beach sandy beach with clean water but okay again you have to be there early I think I came after nine and I was basically alone, but just, I don't know, half an hour after me, people started to come and around 12, it was full of people. There were hundreds of people. So come early or maybe late to avoid those masses of tourists. But I'm planning that, that Eastern uh, coastal hike here on Mallorca. So I will come one more time and I want to explore this 
this area because it's 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 just beautiful you know here and there is one more tip which i want to recommend and also don't recommend at the same time and that's that's uh wait i have to find the name it's a canyon it's a canyon torrent de paris it's very special place like nowhere else or on, on Mallorca or anywhere around. It's very, very interesting place. It's a canyon which is 200 meters deep and the path is going through the canyon and the path is like 10 to 50 meters wide only and around you they are just, just, just rocks, 200 meters big rocks. So you are walking like a little, little teeny tiny ant down there through that canyon and I'm saying that I recommend it and don't recommend it at the same time because it's very very difficult to to go through it uh, I read some articles about it I didn't go there blindly and people were saying that they are they are rocks and uh, some climbing spots and that it's not for children or for dogs or whatever so I just went there, but <laughs> actually it was a mistake. I wouldn't do that mistake again and I wouldn't go there again because it was very, very dangerous. Some of those, it, you can imagine that it's like that canyon, you know, the 200 meters deep canyon. And there is a path down there, those 10 to 50 meters wide path. But it feels like that somebody threw randomly many rocks and boulders and, and, and stuff there, you know, from the top. So, some rocks are just that big, some rocks are, you know, that big, but they are also rocks which are 5 or 10 or 20 meters big. And you, you can't climb, like, you, you have to climb those, but it's very, very difficult. And I think either I'm a loser and I don't know how to climb, or just some new rocks, big rocks had to fall there because sometimes I was so desperate, I didn't know what to do. There was a wall of rocks in front of me, five meters long, tall, and I knew I had to climb it, but I didn't know how. I was just walking around and didn't know how. So I ended up throwing my backpack up there, like two meters at least higher, and tried to, to climb it somewhere and hoping that I will be able to get back and bad track for my backpack and I think that like four four parts of that canyon were very difficult the canyon is not that long it's like I don't know two maybe three kilometers hello <laughs> yeah so it's a uh, it's a two to three kilometers and from those two to three kilometers they are maybe two hundreds of meters which are two hundred of meters which are hard and we which needs climbing but it was slippery first of all it was slippery i slipped many times i injured myself i have bruises and and scratches everywhere also the backpack when you have you know 15 kilos on, on your back how you can climb it's basically look here you can basically say that it's like that there that you have to climb this stuff somehow there and sometimes uh, there were even rocks you know through the whole whole the the path and you have you had to go around so it was very dangerous on not, on one place I met a group of uh, climbers I asked if they have a gear and they said they, they have a gear and that you should be prepared and experienced to go through the canyon, you know. You can go actually from the, the beach one, two kilometers and they, there is not much climbing and you can go back. That's a nice trip. But if you want to go through that, they were places when you are squeezing, you know, through little hole between rocks and you have to squeeze there or they were places when they are like rocks like this and this distance is like i don't know 50 centimeters and you had to you know crawl up there 
on I, one place I was completely desperate and I was super lucky because on the whole time I was just going through that canyon I met only one group of people and those were those, were those experienced people, climbers and they told me, literally they were guiding me, put your left hand there and your leg there but I'm not that, that like you will kill yourself you idiot you have to put the right leg not the left leg and they were basically telling me where I should put my hands and, and what I should do and where I should jump to get over the place because I didn't know I just didn't know and with a backpack it was really difficult and dangerous and once I slipped really really badly and like little little rock going from the from the wall saved me if it wouldn't be there I would fall yeah it was it was dangerous and I wouldn't go there again without the gear or without experienced uh, climbers or someone who just you know knows how to climb stuff so I don't recommend you I don't recommend you really I can't not recommend you enough to not go there with a backpack alone because it's very risky and I wanted to go like twice or three times I wanted to go back but you can't go back because it's easier to go up you know and sometimes when it's several meters big rock and I could see only the only way down just to slide somehow <laughs> you can't go back so you just have to push forward yeah the video got disconnected and connected again the camera okay so uh, yeah you 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 it it's in the map it shows that it should take you three hours though it's two three four kilometers it took me six and i came out completely completely exhausted the whole elevation is 900 over 900 meters and when i climbed it when i was at the end completely dead i saw a helicopter flying there and soon flying back so i had somebody slip there and fell and i hope they are okay but yeah yeah that was a dangerous place and i don't recommend you if you are going to flow my trail this time avoid that place because it's dangerous or if you are a climber maybe you will enjoy it i'm sure that it would be very enjoyable there going with the gear and with experienced people that i would enjoy definitely but not alone not on slippery rocks not with the heavy backpack no no that was a, that was a mistake one of few mistakes i made in my hiking career and definitely the biggest one on, on all, all Mallorca, they are they are sheep and goats everywhere. Sometimes they are afraid, so they don't close to you. Sometimes they come close, and they are very cute. They are even donkeys and mules. The, when the 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 horse and a, a horse and a donkey breeds, I think there is a mule, and those were super cute. And once I slept in a higher area, it was basically mountain area, and a sheep came to me in the midnight, you know, in the middle of the night, the, the sh a sheep came and started to bear into my ears. That was very, very interesting experience. I, sh I think she got lost or something, but yeah, sheep are everywhere here too. The whole trail was I didn't count it yet, but I think it was nearly 200 kilometers what I walked. Um, I definitely suggest to take as light gear as possible, especially especially good especially good shoes because most of the paths or big part of the paths are rocky. You are just walking on rocks like this, you know, and. Uh, you need very good shoes and not just good shoes but shoes you are used to i'm very big advocate of uh, running shoes for hiking because they are very breathable they are comfortable i never i've never had any even single blister in those and i hiked in this is the second pair i have one lasts like 1000 kilometers so that's not that, that much but they are super comfortable. Some people are recommending boots, you know, heavier boots. I don't know about those. People say they are happy with them, but they don't breathe. And when you are walking, here I was walking 10 hours per day, basically from sunrise to sunset. And for that, I just want breathable shoes, light shoes. 
because one kilo on your feet is three kilos on your back and you just want to be light. I didn't take even a back uh, the a tent because the forecast was good. And, but I think that during later months or early uh, like February or March I would take a tent because it could be it could be rainy. But now during summer, spring, late summer, it's very nice and you don't need a tent. What's another very convenient thing here is that everyone speaks English, so it's very easy to communicate with with everyone. Everyone speaks English. Even older people, like in some places where I was in Spain or Canary Islands or, or Portugal, some older people didn't speak English here. Everyone I spoke to was speaking English. So is, is, and, and people are friendly, everyone gives you advices. Sometimes I was hitchhiking, so people took me for one kilometer on the road so I didn't have to go on the dangerous road by the cliff. So very easy and the same with food. The whole Mallorca is full of restaurants and bars and they have awesome vegan options everywhere here where it's very easy even f for vegans to eat here and I'm enjoying it here. I'm it here for the last two, three days. I, I'm I have just chill days when I'm just chilling on the beach and and enjoying views, and I'm exploring here the meals, you know, because they are vegan, very good vegan restaurants where they cook really really good food, and it's it's very nice experience to try many of those. Even even bars, you know, and, and pizzerias. It's food and meal here, local food and meal here is very good experience and very big part of the the journey here. And I recommend just not to take your own, which you need, but if you can, you can just go back and forth to some village or town and eat there something really good and uh, go back to the trail. Yeah, so. That's it. I finished and going to explore more vegan restaurants here and more beaches. Uh, I was very pleasantly surprised by this hike because as I said, I didn't know how it will look like, what's there, what's, what are those paths. And I was very pleasantly surprised because it was absolutely gorgeous. And I recommend <laughs> to not always take, you know, those official trails because you will miss this beauty here. And I will come back here again for the first time and probably for the last time uh, to explore the East Coast because I made already my plan for the East, East Coast hike, which is also like 180 kilometers long from Puerto Cristo, I think, all the way to Formentor to explore the whole Formentor and to go by those beaches and by those cliffs, there should be way less elevation. But that's probably for the next year. My next destination is uh, Fuerteventura, which is another Canary Island. It's uh, something what I am used to do now. Every winter in December, going to one Canary Island so this one, it will be Fuerteventura. I also made my own hike because there is one official trail there, which is called GR131, but I extended it and improved it and made it more again around beautiful cliffs and beaches. So I'm looking forward in two months to be in Fuerteventura. And many plans for the next year. The bucket list is all only growing, which is good. So maybe see you on another trail or in another report from the trail.